Welcome back, Math and Magicians. Today we're going to start Unit 2, which is factoring. I'd like to take a moment to really try and impress upon you the importance of what you're about to learn. Factoring... Why is this not writing? Sometimes I hate this stuff. You know? Factoring is the most important thing you're going to learn in Algebra 2. You are going to use factoring for literally every single unit for the rest of the year. Okay, so if I told you in art, you're going to use drawing a circle for every single assignment for the rest of the year, and then you skipped it, and you learn to draw circles like this. Do you think you're going to get a good grade when the next unit is draw a circle and put some eyes on it? No, because your circle is going to look like this and then you failed step one. If you cannot factor, you will fail algebra two because Step one of almost every pro uh, problem for the rest of the sem uh, semester and year is factor. We're going to do solving quadratics. The second step in that is factor. We're going to simplify rational functions. The way you do that is by factoring. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. And almost every single one of them has factor in it as a step. You have to learn to factor. If you don't, it's like avoiding learning to draw a circle in art. You can't do it. And if you do do it, you can't be successful in it. Okay. Let's go talk about factoring. Today we're going to talk about two different types of factoring. We're going to talk about GCF factoring. And GCF, for those of you who forgot fourth grade, stands for greatest common factor oh wow what's that word it's almost like factoring is important and then trinomial factoring this is also called simple factoring because it's the most straightforward type of factoring there is um, some people also call it factoring by inspection because the steps for trinomial factoring are kind of step one look at it Step two, write the answer. So it's one of those things where you're going to look at it, think really hard until you know the answer, and then write it down. It's kind of like reverse multiplying. Um, you probably don't have like a process for uh, nine times eight anymore. You probably just know the answer to this is 72, right? That's what trinomial factoring is kind of like. You look at it and you should just know what the answer is because you've done enough of them, you know? So let's go talk about the two. All right, so factoring with a GCF. Factoring is the process of rewriting an expression as the product, this is the fancy word for multiply, of its factors. Um, let's take an example. 42 can be written as 7 times 6, not 0.6. Let's try that one more time. Is 7 times 6. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to give you the answer and we're going to ask you to break it apart and turn it back into a multiplying problem. That's what factoring is. So factoring is going to take an equation and then from standard form, and it's gonna put it in factored form. It's gonna break it up into like x plus seven, x minus six. Simple enough. So this, I'd like to reemphasize, is a concept we will use over and over. You cannot be successful in Algebra 2 unless you learn to factor. So GCF factoring is when we take the largest value out of all the terms that is in common. So the idea is we have to find the common factor and undistribute it, right? 
GCF factoring is like undoing distribution. And we'll look at some examples. Okay. Um, this is not super duper important here. Um, and then we'll revisit this. There are some uh, patterns to doing simple factoring. Um, and it has to do with if this is a plus or a minus, and then if this is a plus or a minus, it'll, we'll look at these patterns when we get there. All right, let's just go ahead and jump into some uh, examples because I think examples are the easiest way for us to start. We're gonna come back to this one because this one's a little bit more than we bargained for on the first slide, but it's okay. All right, we're gonna start this slide off with a few examples of GCF factoring. So what we're looking for is a common factor that every single term shares, or it's a number that we can divide all those terms by evenly. So let's think, what number can we divide eight and 32 by? Hmm. And then we think, we think, all right, what are, what are all the factors of eight? Well, two goes into eight, four goes into eight, eight goes into eight. What goes into 32? Well, two, four, eight. So we're looking at GCF. So we want the greatest common factor. The factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. The factors of 32 are one, two, four, eight, 16, 16, and 32. So the biggest number that is on both of these lists is eight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put eight in front, parentheses, then we're going to divide these by eight. We're not canceling the eight out forever, we're pulling the eight out in front. So it shouldn't go away. You have to have the GCF in the answer. So eight goes into eight one time, and we don't do anything with the x. Eight goes into 32 four times, uh, positive four. This is our factored answer. We can check it by multiplying the GCF back in or distributing. If we distribute the eight back in, eight times one is eight, bring your x along. Eight times four is 32. Oh look, that's the original problem. So what we're doing is we're undistributing. We're finding the common factor, dividing it out, and putting it in front. All right, let's look at example two here. What numbers go into 15 and 25? Well, 15 is sometimes, here, let me show you a trick. I like to write it sometimes as like a little table. So 15 is one and 15, two, no, not two. 1, 15, 3, and 5. Then if we look at 25, we're looking at 1 and 25, 5 and 5. So the number that's on both of these lists that's the biggest is 5. So we're going to take a 5 out. So we're going to put our 5 in front, and then we're going to divide these by 5. 5 goes into 15 three times. Bring down your x. Plus 5 goes into 25 five times. This is your answer, pretty easy. All right, let's look at number three. We're not gonna factor this all the way, even though it says uh, factor completely, just because this one's kind of a doozy. Um, but we'll, we'll do the GCF part. So when we say GCF, it has to be a greatest common factor of all of the terms. So because there's three terms, we need something that goes into three, into six, and into nine. It's pretty obvious it's three. So we're gonna put three in front. Then we're gonna divide all of these by three. So three goes into three one time, bring down your x squared. Three goes into negative six, negative two times, bring down your x. Three goes into negative nine, negative three times. This is actually factorable, but we're not quite there yet. All right. Now let's look at some funky stuff. Let's look at number four. Let's start off with the easy part. What number goes into three and six? Three, I hope you can see that pretty well. 
Let's look what else they have in common. This one has x's and this one has x's. So we can take some x's out. And now let me tell you a brief story, okay? Let's say this is you and you're real mad because uh, your parents don't hug you enough. So you decide to take up the life of bullying. And this is uh, Tommy here and you're gonna bully this kid and you say, give me all your money. So Tommy gives you $5. Okay. Then you finish bullying Tommy and you're going to come over here. Are you, you're attached to Tommy. Gosh, darn it. You bullied him so hard. You're attached. Then you come over here and then you're going to bully Jimmy. And you say, Jimmy, give me all your money. So Jimmy gives you $3 because Jimmy is on a free and reduced lunch program where he pays $2 less because his parents don't make quite as much money as Tommy's. So you do the only thing that you can and you come back to Tommy and you give him $2 back because it's not fair if you take $5 from Tommy and only three from Jimmy, you're an equal opportunity bully. You have to bully everyone equally. Okay, I hope you learned your lesson. So let's go ahead and look at how bullying relates to uh, factoring. You come over here, this is Tommy. You say, give me all your exponents. X to the fourth is the same thing as X times X times X times X. So you wanna take out as many X's as possible. So you try and take out four. Then you come over here to Jimmy and you say, give me all your X's but Jimmy only has two X's. So the most that we can take from both of them because we bear, bully fairly is two X's. So we're gonna take X squared out of both of these. This is a very long way of saying you can only take whatever the lowest exponent is from your variables. So because our smallest exponent is a two, we can only take X squared. All right, so we're gonna put our GCF out in front, three X squared. Now we're gonna divide. So the three cancels the three. These four X's are being divided by two X's. So this X cancels that X, that X cancels that X, and then we have two left. So this, you're gonna subtract the exponents. Four minus two is two. So we're gonna have X squared left. Three goes into six two times. These two X's cancel both of those X's and you have no X's left. So this is your answer. Okay, so there's our last example for GCF factoring. Now let's go ahead and go look at simple factoring. So now there isn't a GCF in problem number five here. The invisible coefficient here is one and if we say the GCF is one, if we divide by one, one goes into five, five times. One goes into six, six times, and nothing changes. So we don't factor out ones, it's kind of pointless. So we need a different method. We need to figure out what two things got multiplied together to get this. Okay, so here's how we do this. There's a pattern. We need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give us negative six. Those same two numbers have to add or subtract to give us negative five. So let's look. We're gonna start by looking at negative six and we're gonna figure out what are the, mul uh, the factors of negative six. And we'll worry about the negative in a second. So we could multiply to get six by doing one times six, that could work. Or we can do two and three. Because we wanna make this negative, one of these has to be positive and one of these has to be negative. So we need one of each. We have to pick a pair of these that will give us negative five. So the easiest way we could do that is 
negative 6 and positive 1. So let me show you what I mean by this. 1 minus 6, that's the subtraction part, equals negative 5. So we get the middle number, check mark. 1 times negative 6, the multiplying, gives us negative 6, check mark. So the two numbers that we're going to use, that we're going to put in these parentheses, are 1 and negative 6. And because it's just 1, we say it's plus 1. Then in the front here, we ask ourselves, what two things can we multiply together to get this? So the only way we can multiply to get x squared is x times x. So we put an x here and an x here. Now let's just check our answer on this one so that you're sure that this works the way I say it does. Um, who knows, I could be lying to you guys, right? So if we FOIL this, x times x is x squared, x times negative 6 is negative 6x, 1 times x is plus x, and 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Combine our like terms, x squared minus 5x minus 6. And this is what we started with. So that means that this factoring is the correct answer. Okay, let's try that again without all the explanation. What we're going to do is we're going to look at negative 30 and we're going to find all the factors of negative 30 and then we're going to pick two of them that will add or subtract to give us 7. So there's 1 and 30, there's 2 and 15, there's 3 and 10, and then there's 6 and 5. So can we use 1 and 30 to get 7? Well, if we add them, it's 31. If we subtract, it's 29. So they're too far apart. 2 and 15, we could add to get 17, but we want just 7. And if we subtract, we get 13. Nope. Ah, oh, these look good. If we do 10 minus 3, that'll give us 7. So 10 minus 3 equals 7. So the subtraction works out. Let's just double check the multiplying. 10 times negative three is negative 30. So the multiplying works out. So we're gonna take those two numbers we found and put them in our parentheses. Minus three plus 10. And the order doesn't matter. If you have the plus 10 here and the minus three here, it's the same thing. Then what two things do we multiply together to get x squared? x and x. So you can either write your answer like this or like this. The only difference is the order and the order doesn't matter. Okay, let's do two more. So we want to look at negative 14 and find all of our factors. So 14, we can multiply one and 14 or we can multiply uh, two and seven. We need to get negative 15. So we could do negative one and negative 14. Negative one minus 14 is negative 15. Let's check our multiplying. Negative one times negative 14 is positive 14. That's not good because we need a negative here. So maybe let's try something else. Uh, we could two and seven. Well, even if we subtract both of them, negative two minus seven, we only get negative nine. So the subtraction doesn't work to give us our negative 15. So this one, nothing we try works. So this one is just not factorable. It's not possible. Okay, let's try number eight. Again, we're gonna look at negative 42. And the invisible number here is a one. So for negative 42, we're gonna look at our factors. So there's one and 42. There's two and 21. Um, let's see, we could do three and what is it? Uh, 14. Um, there's gotta be some closer. 
uh, seven and six. Oh, okay. So let's look how we can make a one. Um, we need, well, let's see, one and 42. Those are too far apart to add or subtract to get one. Two and 21. If I do 21 minus two, I get 19, not even close to one. 14 minus three, that's 11, not close enough. Oh, seven minus six, that's one, is seven times negative six, negative 42. Yeah, so we're gonna do seven and negative six. So we're gonna have x plus seven and x minus six. Wonderful, so there's our factoring. Let's go back and look at number three again. So this one is what's called a multi-step factoring problem, meaning we have to do GCF factoring, then simple factoring. So we're gonna have to do two types of factoring to get this one factored all the way. So let's go ahead and try that. We're gonna start by taking out our GCF and we already decided that that's three. So we're gonna put three, divide all these by three. So we're gonna get x squared minus two x minus three, just like we did last time. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore this three for right now, but we're going to simple factor the inside. Okay, so we need to look at negative three and we need to look at all of its factors Three is prime, so its only factors are one and three. Can we make a negative two with these? Well, we can either do negative one plus three, that's two. Let's try and put the negative on the three. One minus three, that's negative two. Is one times negative three, negative three? Yeah, it is. So what we're gonna use is positive one and negative three. So let's factor this. This part that's underlying blue becomes x plus one and x minus three. Now this three here, this can't go away. That's our GCF. And if you get rid of it, you've changed the problem. You kind of want to think of this coefficient of three like your little brother. Yeah, it's annoying and it just hangs around with you all the time and when you say, mom, can I go to the mall with my friends and hang out and then do hood rat stuff and go look at all the weird stuff in Spencer's? And she says, yeah, that's fine, but you have to take your little brother with you. So it's not like this really changes your plan, right? You're still gonna go to mall with your friends. You're still gonna hang out. You're still gonna do hood rat stuff, but you can't forget about him. You can't lose your little brother. Because if you lose your little brother, your mom's gonna kill you, maybe literally. So if you lose the three, your answer is wrong, and then your mom's gonna kill you because you failed your math class. So you can't forget the coefficient. Sometimes I like to just draw a big arrow and then put it down where I think I'm gonna write my answer later so that I don't forget it. Because if you forget it, the answer is wrong and you're gonna be really mad when it gets marked wrong. All right, we've already talked about all these. Let's look at these signs. There are some patterns. So it says, what would be the signs in the parentheses for each generic quadratic or general? Pardon me, I can't read. So what we're looking at is the sign in front of the last number, which is C, and it's gonna be C for the rest of your life. So A, B, C. They're just the coefficients of the squared, the x, and then the constant by itself. So this sign in front of the c and this sign in front of the b tell us a pattern. If c is positive like this, then the signs match, okay? Meaning we're either gonna have plus plus or we're gonna have minus minus, okay? The sign in front of the B tells us the sign of the bigger, uh, whoops, hold on, of the bigger number. And we'll go back and look at some examples on the last slide. So 
because this is going to be plus, they match. This tells me the bigger number will be positive. So one number is going to be positive and they match. All right, let's look at this. C is positive, so they match. The bigger number is negative, so negative and they match. Okay, so if a plus sign for C means they match, a minus sign must mean they're different. This is still going to tell us the sign of the bigger number, which we'll put pop first. So the bigger number is negative and the signs are different. So if this is negative, this should be positive. If we look at this one, they're different because of the C. And the bigger number is positive. So plus, different, minus. Let's go back and look, at, actually, do we have more examples here? We'll come to those. Let's look at these just to make sure the pattern works. So here we have a minus, so they're different. Oh, look, they're different. That's a plus, that's a minus. This sign is a plus. Seven's the bigger number, so it's the positive. Let's look up here. We've got a minus, so they're different. Okay, well, there's a minus, there's a plus. The middle is positive, so the bigger number should be positive. 10 is bigger than three, and it's the positive one. Okay, last one to check. It's a minus, so they're different. It's a minus in front of the B, so the bigger number's negative. Six is the bigger number, it's negative, and they're different, positive and negative. So the pattern holds. All right, let's go do two more mixed factoring or multi-step factoring. So we're gonna take out a GCF first, then simple factor. So let's look at this. What number goes into two, 32, and 128? Well, the only numbers that go into two are one and two, so it's gotta be two. So let's take a two out of everything. Okay, two goes into two one time, so we have one x squared. I usually don't write coefficients of one. Two goes into 32 16 times, bring down your x. Two goes into 128 64 times. Okay, now we need to do simple factoring here. So we need two numbers that are gonna multiply to 64 and add to 16. So 64, our factors are one and 64, two and 32, um, four and 16, eight and eight. Which ones can we add up to get 16? Eight and eight. The sign is positive on the C, so they're gonna match, and that sign is a plus, so they're both plus signs. So it's gonna be plus eight, plus eight, x times x is x squared. Don't forget your little brother we have a two in front there, so we need a two in front here, otherwise your mom's gonna be angry. All right, number 10, and then this is our last example. What number goes into three, six, and 24? Well, three is prime, and its only factors are one and three, so it must be three. Okay, let's look though. All of these also have an x in common. So this one has three x's, this one has two, this one doesn't have a number, so there's only one x there. So remember, we have to bully fairly. If the smallest exponent is a one, we can only take out one x from each of them. So we're gonna divide everything by three x. Okay, three goes into three one time. There were three, I'm taking one out, so now there's two x's left. Three goes into negative six, negative two times. There were two x's, I'm taking one out, so there's one left. Three goes into negative 24, negative eight times. There was one x, I'm taking it out, this x cancels that one, so there's no x's left. Now, we have to do simple factoring on this. So we need two numbers 
that are gonna multiply to eight and add to negative two. So let's look at eight. To multiply to get eight, we can do one and eight or two and four. We need to get a two, so it's gonna be four minus two. That's two, and then four times negative two, that's negative eight, just like that. Let's just double check our sign patterns. It's negative, so we're gonna have one of each, and the bigger number should be negative. Oh, see, I goofed up here. Four minus two is two, we want negative two. So I messed up, good thing we checked this, so now we can fix it. We should take our negative and move it onto the four. So this will be plus, that's minus. So four, negative four plus two is negative two, like it should be. Negative four times two is still negative eight. So minus four plus two, x, x. Don't forget your little brother, three x in front. And then this is our answer. All right, that's a lot of factoring, long video, sorry about that, but it's super important. So if you have any questions, please ask for help. If you're not gonna do your homework, I don't even know how you made it 31 minutes into a math video. Please do your homework, otherwise I'm gonna have to call your parents. Until next time, have a great day.